sometimes in life you want your post to look different depending on the type of post that you're creating. For example, if you are creating a food recipe website, you might want your posts that are used for recipes to look like recipes, but you may want your news stories to look like normal news stories. So the problem you have is they all look the same by default. So today I'm going to show you how you can create different flavors or different designs for each post type that you create using no plugins whatsoever. So on this website, I have two main post types. I have recipes and I have news stories, but at the moment they both look identical. So if I click on my news post along the top here, you'll see here's the layout for the news story. And if I click on my recipe, here's the layout for the recipe, but they're both using the same post layout. Whereas I want the recipe layout to look completely different. This is how you do it. So first off, you click on edit site up here in the admin toolbar. That'll take you back to the full site editor. Once you're back here, you need to click on the W up here to give you access to your templates. So down here, we want to click on this option here, templates. That's going to load in your current templates, but we need to create a brand new template. This is how this works. So over in the top right up here, we're going to click add new, and then we're going to come all the way down here to custom template, and we click on that. And then this is where we can create our custom template. So this is where you give it a name. You can call it whatever you like. This has no relationship to anything. It's just so you can identify it. Then we're going to click on create. That's going to load in the single post template, but we can now customize it. If we click on the list view up here, we can see what this contains and you'll see we've just got a post title, post content and some footer stuff. So if we wanted to, just for this post type, we could actually remove the footer. We could also remove the header as well, but I'm going to leave the header. Now I'm just going to make a few little changes here just so it's clear to us what's actually happening. What I'm actually going to do is just remove the post title and then I'm going to put a cover block in up here because I love the cover block. And, and then within that, I'm going to choose this option here, use featured image. That means it will dynamically bring in the featured image of that post into that space and place it as a background. Then instead of writing a pi title, I'm going to put the post title, this option here, this block, this is just a block. And I'm going to make this a little bit deeper by pulling the cover block down. And I'm also going to change the text color on the post title block to white. Okay. Now the key bit is we're going to save this and you'll see it'll save it as the recipes template. Now that is not connected to anything at this point. It, just to repeat myself, it's not relate, related to anything at all at this point. When we create the actual post itself, we have to tell that post to choose that template type. And this is how you do it. So I'm going to go add new post and you create your post as you normally would. Then I'm going to choose the featured image by clicking on the post tab and coming down here and choosing featured image. Let's just choose one of these. But the key bit is just here. Can you see here? where it's choosing at the moment, it's using at the moment the single post template, we need to choose from this drop down this option here. This is the new template we've just chosen. Okay. Now it doesn't really matter whether we categorize them here. The template is the key, but I will categorize it, but let's publish that and go and view the post. And we'll see that that post now is using that brand new template that I just designed. But if I go to the new story, we'll see the new story is using the old template. One thing to mention here is that if you just want to edit the single post template, then within your page templates, you have this single post template, which you can edit and that will apply to all your default posts. If you also want to create a custom archive or category page for your post, that's also super easy. Just go back to the full set editor and then again, click on the add new in the top right to add a new template and then choose this option here for category. Click on category. Now at this point, you're going to get a choice to choose a template for all your categories or for one specific category. So I'm going to click on that and then I'll get the choice to choose a category from all my categories. I'm going to choose recipes at this point and that will just load in the default archive layout for your category pages, but you can change this to anything at all because we're just using blocks. So if I wanted to create a grid out of this, I could do that. Or for example, if I wanted to add a heading above here, food stuff. That's not very imaginative and save that. And you'll see over on the right, it's going to save that for all posts of category type recipes layout. Let's go and have a look at that. And there we go. There's my new category layout just for my recipes. If you build sites for clients, you may well be sitting there thinking, well, I don't really want my clients to have to choose the template every time they create a post because they'll probably forget to do it. So the good news is you can actually make this easier for them. You will need a plugin. It's this plugin here, the custom post type UI plugin. I'll put a link to it in the description below for you. By the way, you'll also use this approach if you ever need to put extra information into your custom post types using a plugin like Advanced Custom Fields. There are just three steps we need to take to get this working. Step one, we're going to create the custom post type using the custom post type UI plugin. Step two, 
we're going to create a custom template using full site editing. Three, we're going to create some content. Let's start with step one. We need to create the custom post type using custom post type UI. So we're going to go down to the bottom here and click on where it says CPT UI and that'll launch us into the screen. Now really all we're doing here is creating our custom post type for our recipe. So I'm going to type in recipes. That's our slug. And then we're going to have a plural name, which is recipes. And then we're going to have a singular label, which is recipe. As soon as I click add post type, you see up here, it's actually added me a new menu item. This is why this is kind of more friendly in lots of ways. If you are handing sites off to clients, because it's very clear to them where they add the content and all they have to do is add the content and the template bit gets taken care of them. So now we're going to change the layout. This is very simple. We're going to go to the full site editor. So we go appearance and then editor. Now, as soon as you create that custom post type, it becomes available for you as a template. Click on the W up here, then go to templates just here, then come along here and we're going to click on add new and the top right. And you will see one of the options in here is a single item recipe. How cool is that? The full site editor has recognized we've got a new custom post type and it's now going to let us basically create a different layout for that particular post type. Click on that and that will just load in our normal post type editor. We're now just in the full site editor, but we're editing the page template for that particular post type. Now we can make, again, we can make any changes we like here. There we go. So I've basically just changed the template for the single post type type recipe. Now when I create one of those recipe post types, it will automatically inherit that template. Let's go add new recipe and I'll publish that and we should see it has a horrible background color behind that green title. If you want to create a custom archive page for your custom post types which have been created using the custom post type UI, is that enough customs for you? Then you can actually do it by creating an add new taxonomy over here. Now I found a few issues with this at the moment. It may be a bug which I'm going to report. So I think for now the easiest way is you go add new page. There's nothing really wrong with doing it this way and then I'm going to call this recipes and then all I'm going to do is add the query loop block into that page itself and basically handcraft my own recipe page. Now the only thing you need to do is click on the query loop here and then over on the right here where it says post type we want to select the post type of recipe and that's going to bring in all your recipes. Now because we're using the block editor we can lay out this query loop block however we like. <laughs> so there we go there's custom post types done four ways whether you want to build them for your own website or whether you want to build them for your clients websites. If you enjoyed this video if you can hit that like button now it would be amazing because it really 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 does help spread the word of the channel and every time you do hit that like button our cats Get a little treat. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and keep up to date with everything that's happening around WordPress and the block editor, hit subscribe now and you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Keep well and I'll see you soon. Bye.